All right, problem four, we got this function f that satisfies f of zero being 20, and the first derivative of f satisfies the inequality of f prime being between zero and seven for all x in this closed interval zero to six. Now, this table shows such selected values of f prime, and we're told that f is continuous, or that the function f has a continuous second derivative for all real numbers. All right, in part A, we got to find a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals of equal length to approximate f of six. Okay, so um, remember what a um, Riemann sum um, essentially is? It's you're, you're, you're summing up um, areas of, in this case, it'll just be rectangles. So, Adding up these areas of the rectangles with um, heights f of x will give you an idea of essentially the, the total um, the total um, length of f, um, how it changes across this interval. But let's just get to it so you know so you can see exactly what I mean. Okay, so let's draw a table so you can visualize this, or so you don't have to visualize this, you can see what's going on. So we're told f of zero is 20. So we start at zero 20. And remember this table gives you um, values that describe the rate of change, not the value of f. And we're gonna break it into three subintervals. So at two, from zero to two, from two to four, and then from four to six. So let's do that at two four, and six. Now, if, if we know that the function f, if we know f prime is changing at these rates, four, 3.5, and two, this will allow you to get an idea of what the value of f of x would be at one, two, and all these other values by using this derivative. So for example, in this case, it tells us to use a midpoint Riemann sum. So we want to find the value of the rectangle where we use the middle point between each of these, so one, three, and five, to estimate the height. So this, rec this first rectangle has a width of two. And when we look at the derivative at one, it says that it's 3.5. That means on average, the value of f is gonna change by 3.5 on this first interval. So if it changes by 3.5 on this first interval, that means it's gonna increase and at two, it'll be Now, going from there, we can look at uh, the same idea on the interval from two to four and use this rate of change at three, where it says 0.8. And then from there, we can go ahead and increase, actually, this, I did this wrong, sorry. Um, what's going on here, if, we want, if we're changing by an average of 3.5, we gotta do that twice, 3.5 plus 3.5. Remember the slope is 3.5 plus 3.5. I knew something was off, I was just feeling a little weird. So going up by 3.5 and then going up by 3.5 again, leaves us at 27, at 227. Let me just put it here. So changing by one and then that's plus a 3.5 and then plus a 3.5 again. So we're increasing by 3.5 twice on average. On the next interval from two to four, we're increasing by 0.8 on average. We're gonna increase by 0.8 twice. So at four, going up by 0.8 twice will, lead, will leave us at 1.6 more than this or at 28.6.
And then from um, four to six, on average, we're increasing by 5.8, and so by 5.8 twice. So from not drawing the scale, so at six, if we increase by 5.8 twice from 28, that would leave us at 5.8 times two, which is, what would that be, 10 or 11.6 plus this, 11.6 plus that would be 29.2, 30, 40.2. So, so, so based on this, our approximation of f of six would be a, you know, about 40.2. Now you don't have to actually draw this out like that. I just did that to kind of show you. Like if you want to see like the simple work, we would just, you know, again, use the algebra equation. And f of six would be equal to the starting value, 20, f of zero, 20 plus two times 3.5 plus two times 0.8. And plus two times 5.8. And you're going to end up getting that 40.2. 40, 40 um, again, I, uh, I like to show this when I'm teaching because it, it, it really helps connect what this means with a picture. All right, now B, determine whether the actual value of F6 could be 70. Explain your reasoning. OK, so let's go back to this and remember that this is just an estimation. We don't know that that's going to be 40.2. We're given limited information. But we can determine that it won't be 70 because if you look at what it says here, it says the derivative of f prime of x is going to be from 0, but no more than 7. So let's say it was at the highest value. Let's say at most it was seven. Then what would happen to f of x is that you would increase by seven, like plus seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. You would increase by seven six times. So the highest value that could possibly happen would be 20 plus six times seven or 62. Because you start at 20, we started at 20, and again, if we were increasing by seven, six times, which is the most we can do, and most we get 62. So then that wouldn't be possible just based on that. And here's my written explanation, so you can just see it from here. I'm going to write that down. Feel free to pause, it. Feel free to pause the video. And as, I, as you do that, I'm going to move on. Let's move on to part C. OK, evaluate the integral from 2 to 4 of f double prime of x. OK, so you really just have to understand what, um, how, how the second derivative relates to the first derivative. And remember, if, when we integrate, what we do is we evaluate the antiderivative of the integrand at these points. Antiderivative of f double prime is just f prime. And using the first, or yeah, using the first fundamental theorem of calculus, this would be just f prime of four minus f prime of two. And these values are just in the table. These are given in the table. We flip over. We you can see f prime of two is two, and f prime of four is one point seven. So this would just be one point seven minus two. And that would just be equal to negative 0.3. All right, in part D, find this limit, f of x minus 20e to the x over 0.5 f of x minus 10 as x goes to 0. OK, so if you were simply to always first try direct substitution, so if you were to plug in 0 for x, you would have f of 0 minus 20e to the 0 over 0 0.5 times f of 0 minus 10. f of 0, we're told is 20. So this becomes 20 minus 20 times e to the 0, which is just 20 
20 times one. So the top becomes zero. The bottom 0. 0.5 times 20 minus 10, that just becomes 10 minus 10. So we get zero over zero. So we get indeterminate expression. So to handle that, we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule. L Hospital's rule is gonna come and save us. And what that says is that when you get an indeterminate form of, you know, zero, zero, or like infinity to infinity, something like that, you can, you know, usually those, these are the most common. You can also get like infinity to the zero or something and infinity to the infinity. But we have this indeterminate form. That just, that just then may, means that we just have to take the derivative of the top expression and over the derivative of the bottom expression and reevaluate. So let's find the derivative of the top. F, which will be f prime of x minus 20 e to the x over 0. 0.5 times f prime of x minus zero. Then let's try direct substitution again, plug in that zero again. So we're gonna look at f prime of zero minus 20 times e to the zero over 0.5 times f prime of zero minus zero. f prime of zero, looking at our table, we can see it's four. Whoa. So we get this equal to four minus 20 times one, so just minus 20, over 0.5 times four, that zero doesn't matter, so we get negative 16 over two and our answer is just negative eight. All right, and that's all there is to it. So I hope that helps, but um, let me know if you have any questions. All feedback is, you know, is, you know, it's welcome. So good luck.